with that booty first. Kayshawn Booty, hey, all right? One of the uh, more interesting stories that we've had in college football um, in the last couple of weeks, and we've had some doozies, okay? We have a segment around here called Brooksy Gonna Save You Some Reading, so let me save you some reading. There was a uh, an arrest made this morning in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, for Kayshawn Booty being charged with felony computer fraud and a misdemeanor for betting under 21 years of age. Essentially, Kayshawn Booty, not essentially, he did. Kayshawn Booty opened up two uh, DraftKings accounts. Was it DraftKings? Uh, I yes. believe so. Two online gambling accounts, okay, under the age of 21 with false aliases. The first being his mother and the second being a name that he made up by the name of um, – Kayla Fortenberry. Shouts out to Kayla Fortenberry. She got some straight cash uh, in this uh, transaction. But nonetheless, from April 6th of 2022 to May 7th of 2023, Kayshawn Booty placed 8,927 bets with at least 17 of those bets coming on college football and six of those bets per reporting today coming on LSU, including one of them placed on himself. Guys, in 396 days, from April 6th of 2022 to May 7th of 2023, Kayshawn Booty placed over 8,900 bets. That's an average of 22 and a half bets per day. Um, We could talk about going to jail. We could talk about all the, you know, things, laws that he broke and all the charges he's been faced. My man needs to see a therapist. My man probably needs to go to some type of gambler's uh, anonymous type of meeting first before he's committed to any type of uh, sentencing or any type of, uh, you know, court hearing. This is like when you get caught going 120 in a 55 and you go do all your defenseless driving classes before you go to court so you can show the judge that you've actually done some some good deeds prior to going out here and being faced with sentencing. Um, he placed a prop bet on himself in that 2022 FSU game, uh, 82 and a half yards or more. He obviously took the over on that. Um, do you know what his stat line was in that football game? I gentlemen? think it was two receptions, two catches 20 for twenty yards. Two receptions for twenty yards, and I remember him being extremely, extremely animated in that football game. I also saw some highlights, so they should be called lowlights from that football game today as well. He had four drops in yeah, that football game, and had he caught all four of those balls, I think he might have won the bet on himself. Uh, like I told you, he he placed one of these accounts under his mom name um, and one under Kayla Fortenberry both a misrepresentation of identity both uh, charges in this case Uh, the funny thing here and none of this is really funny but the comical thing I should say was uh, the usernames that he used boys he used his mom's name to create the accounts and then of course you have usernames that you have to associate the accounts with the first username that he used on his mom's account was Kayshawn Booty 01 the second username that he used under the second account was Kayshawn Booty 07 now There's a lot of jokes to be had about the smooth criminal behavior that this was, or lack thereof. But my first initial thought when I saw this was, one, he clearly did not have any idea that this was illegal, okay? Because no one's out here doing illegal shit under that type of brashness, okay? No, no, No smart criminal. Okay, so he obviously was very unaware of the laws that he was breaking. Um, ignorance of the law is not innocence of the law, by the way. So that's not going to stand up in court, even though I don't imagine he's going to get life sentence or anything over this or the maximum penalty. But nonetheless, that's the first thing I thought of. Oh, this dude clearly had no idea the, the, the magnitude of the laws that he was breaking. The other thing, um, if he didn't know it was illegal, I know for a fact no one told him. All right. And that's a problem to me. That, that's the main problem. We can make fun of Keishon Booty all we want. But there was a football program out there at LSU that clearly had none of these conversations with any of their athletes. And I'm not saying that's your responsibility. But isn't it? Isn't it your responsibility to make sure that your players aren't out here uh, breaking the laws that are unbeknownst to them? Look, I, I think there's two lessons to be learned here. A, What in the hell was Kayshawn Booty's mama doing with the bank accounts, okay? $132,000 gets deposited out of mine. I think I'd have a heads up. I think I'd be like, hey, what's going on here? All right, so that would be the first thing. The second thing would be like, hey, why didn't no one educate this young man on what was right and what was wrong with regards to online gambling? Again, man, like I don't want to place the blame at the feet of the administration and the feet of the, the, the football organization at LSU, but this was clearly an oversight. Um, very much so clearly an oversight there. So first and foremost, be very, very careful, 
I should say, with where you send your children um, to school because, you know, once they leave your household, they're under a new household, that new household being the college football program that you sent them to. And you better be okay, you better be okay, better be making sure that they're, you know, going through their due diligence with regards to making sure basic laws aren't being broken um, and basic laws are being made aware of, um, particularly with regards to gambling. Um, let's talk a little bit about his gambling record before I get you guys in here because a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff got misrepresented a little bit today. There were some people thinking this dude was on a heater. Um, not so much. He deposited $132,147.53 into his account under both accounts. So this is total amounts under both separate accounts. In those two accounts, they won, he won over a half a million dollars in winnings. All right. But he only withdrew 50000 So for simple math, put 130 in there, took out fifty. He lost 80 grand over about 40, 400 days. And there's a lot of questions to go here, boys. Where do you want to go? Uh, do you think at any point he was on like a stupid, dumb heater and was just like, nah, I'm riding this one out? Or do you think it was classic gambler where I put $100 in, I lost eight today, but don't worry, I won 10 tomorrow, and then I'm going to lose three, and then I'm going to win 10 again. Who? I'm up 20. No, you're not. You're really only up seven. You see what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. the, the math on some of these gambling addictions never really adds up. But when you do it simple input output, net delta is a negative 80 grand. You're a bad gambler. <laughs> you're a bad gambler and you need to stop. Yeah. Um, 8,900 is a freaking huge number. So 22 and a half bets a day. And, and per my understanding of the reporting, this was uh, – like 22 and a half separate registered bets. So if you if you place eight prop bets into one parlay, that's one singular bet. So it wasn't know? even like online casino stuff? Or? I don't believe so. This was all through registered, like big name gambling companies like DraftKings. Good God. I, I, I can't really fathom. I don't know. I don't want to say stupidity, but it almost is. Like, like how do you, one, not know that that's illegal and two if you don't know that's illegal that's a separate story but how do you just consistently lose that much and that much of a spit i mean i guess when you're balling out you have nil checks coming in and such as that but i just i just can't wrap my head around losing eighty thousand dollars yeah in, I, can, what, I, can, I can't 400 days sure I can't either. surely someone was feeding him these bets right like because i mean when i think about like I, like when I put together a prize pick play or whatever, like it takes me a little bit to put that thing together. So, and that's just one. I mean, that just it, that's just one play for a singular day. When I think about doing twenty two of those things a day, that's a lot of time that I think about. So I feel like surely someone was like, "Hey, this is what I recommend for today. I think this is what you should run with." I mean, placing that many bets a day. Now I know it wasn't probably every single day. It was twenty two bets, but. That's a, that's very time consuming to think about. Could it? I mean, have we considered the fact that maybe he was like an agent for something? Like he had that account was taking bets for other people. Oh, like the whole squad was getting in on Kayshawn Booty Oh one. Oh. Yeah, that's not a bad theory, but I would imagine he's rolling immediately. Because I mean, I like immediately yeah, like, turning over on those kids. Yeah, but twenty two bets a day, like every like consistently minimum baseline twenty two twenty two a, a day. Don't forget on e the hooks. That's like that's insane. Like the fact that like, I don't know if one person is capable of doing that. Apparently, um, yeah, dude. The 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 sheer amount of gambling that was going on. What do you is think? Troublesome. So like, I'm just imagining him sitting in class and like, say I'm sitting behind him in class and I see he, he's on DraftKings or whatever, like <laughs> cooking up a bed. You're just like, what the heck? Like this dude is doing something illegal right now. What do I do? And you just. Someone was probably like, dang it, dude. I could I could have done something better. I could have helped him out, and I didn't. I let his problem continue. So there was a lot of questions today on the internet about how a college football player gets that kind of money. Um, this was a year after NIL had been enacted. So I'm going to assume that his ha you know over half of his yearly salary was probably uh, poured into this account. I mean, he was one of the hottest names in wide receiver-wise yeah. in college football. No, I mean, to, to think that he didn't make $130,000 in a single year is a little bit fabricated, yeah. okay? We, yeah. we know what the deal is now in college football. He did um, just fine. <laughs> yeah, he, he was doing fine. I'm sure he's not filing for bankruptcy. However, it hasn't really played well for this guy. 
um, you know, since he was the hottest name. He was like yeah. one of the best wide receivers in the SEC. Even had a great game against Georgia in that SEC championship mm -hmm. game. But um, from everything with regards to the draft process, didn't necessarily go well for this young man. And now this story, um, an absolutely tremendously crazy story, almost as crazy as the rumors about him and that thing that happened that one time at LSU. Oh but we don't have God. to talk about that. No, that was... um, those are some crazy, crazy There's, rumors. There have just been This wild... is just 23 gambling bets a day. This isn't that bad. Yeah, but some of the word. stuff that was reported during that C championship game a couple years ago was wild. Yeah, yeah. just like in, in general, like there have been a bunch of wild stories that come out of LSU in the last, like you remember the Gary, Darius Geis thing? Hey, you remember that time they were uh, stealing money from the local children's hospital to pay oh. back up offensive linemen? Yeah. <laughs> that was wild. It's good times. Uh, remember that time their former head coach, Les Miles, who ate grass, got accused of sexual harassment like 10 years after the fact? That was crazy too. Yeah. Um, so so much so with so much conf concrete evidence, I think his H Hall of Fame voting got restricted, um, and they vacated thirty seven wins. So, yeah, yeah, some crazy stuff go down there in the Bayou, it's and they had the swamp. We didn't even talk about the swamp monster. They had the swamp monster down there for a while too. Some good times. Good times for LSU football, and a great time again to be here on this network. Welcome in. We got a load of.